Green Cape is a non-profit organization that drives the widespread adoption of economically viable green economy solutions from South Africa. They are working on a multi-stakeholder project with the financial support of the Green Climate Fund, implemented and managed by UNIDO. Focused on pipeline development to deploy clean energy technology solutions in municipal wastewater treatment works of South Africa, providing readiness activities for the Green Climate Fund. Ultimately, this project aims to support the utilization of climate finance in the municipal wastewater treatment workspace, where energy efficient and renewable energy applications can assist. This Future Cities Africa episode is with Raldo Kruger, Technical Specialist for Green Finance and the Water Sector at Green Cape. We explore what financiers can consider in partnering with municipalities to fund energy efficiency and renewable energy projects at wastewater treatment works. Raldo, welcome. What are the key financial investment opportunities related to energy efficiency and renewable energy projects at Municipal Wastewater Treatment Works? And how can financiers partner with municipalities? So perhaps just to give your listeners some uh, background information, a little bit of a, a backdrop to this. So Wastewater Treatment Works are the large uh, plants that operate at municipalities that process the sewage um, produced by everyone on a day-to-day basis, as well as some of the industrial effluent. Uh, And those wastewater treatment works are designed to treat that uh, wastewater to a point where it can safely be discharged back into the environment or perhaps used for non-potable uses. And wastewater treatment works are one of the single largest energy consumers within municipalities, within the municipal services that municipalities provide. And they can account for around 25% of the total electricity usage by municipalities themselves. And this is within the South African context. As I think most of us know that the electricity that we draw from the grid in South Africa is still mostly coal-based. And so this electricity consumption is associated with obviously greenhouse gas emissions too. And um, in total electricity usage, by wastewater treatment works at municipalities can account for around 30% of the overall expenditure by municipalities. So it's a, a significant single cost that municipalities carry in, in providing the service. In 2015, the National Energy Efficiency Strategy um, was put out uh, by national government, uh, and the aim for that was to support municipalities or to encourage municipalities to reduce their energy consumption for municipal services by 20%. However, as recently as last year, um, 2022, the Green Drop reports, which are published by the National uh, Department of Water Sanitation, which um, is a kind of a status report on wastewater treatment works in the country, indicated that there's a very limited implementation of energy efficiency and renewable energy technologies um, at municipal wastewater works in South Africa. So the opportunity exists to implement uh, technologies that are mature on the international market, but just haven't been adopted and implemented locally. And because wastewater treatment works operate consistently and predictably um, over a long period of time, uh, the savings that can be generated through implementing these technologies are predictable, and and therefore the opportunity to finance these, uh, these technologies exists. The, the kind of headline figures are that even just with some basic energy efficiency technologies that can be retrofitted uh, at these wastewater treatment works, you can gain uh, efficiencies of yeah, easily up to 15%. With something slightly more complex, you can gain efficiency gains of uh, up to 50%. Uh, and the balance of the, the energy demand then be uh, generated from renewable energy sources or, or other technologies that can be implemented at these wastewater treatment works. So, so it's really, uh, you know, to sum that all up, probably a, a no-brainer for municipalities to implement a lot of these technologies and then for uh, financiers to be able to facilitate is, is really the opportunity that we're talking about today. What are the expected returns on investment and typical payback periods for financiers on these kind of projects? And how do they vary based on project scale and location? 
What we've done is we've identified 10 technologies that have high potential uh, to be implemented at Waste Water Treatment Works, um, which I think was unpacked by my colleague Ashton in the previous podcast. And perhaps to, to answer the question slightly differently, so not so much how the return on investment uh, varies based on um, location or scale of the project, but rather to categorize these technology uh, types into three categories. So at the, in the first category, you can think of um, there's a, a number of interventions and, and a few technologies that can be implemented at very low cost or in some instances, even no cost by municipalities, which have very short payback periods, um, so less than a year or two, which can be implemented across the board by, by most municipalities uh, typically using grant funding from the national government to implement those, uh, those types of interventions. And then the second category of technologies we can think of um, are more kind of on the energy efficiency uh, technologies that can be retrofitted into existing waste or the treatment works that have a three-year or less than three-year payback, maybe in some instances four to five-year payback. And then um, on, the, on the other end of the spectrum, when you think of large refurbishments or substantial capital-intensive projects uh, that can be implemented, then you kind of redesign the, the wastewater treatment works completely or refurbish it completely and implement energy efficiency technologies within that. Um, some of those uh, paybacks can be on a much longer scale, so maybe five to 15 years. I think it's, it's important to think about those three different sort of types of categories of interventions that can be done um, and then try and match the financial instrument or the source of funding uh, to the payback periods um, that's, that's roughly associated with those types of technologies. For the upper end of the scale, when you think of something like anaerobic digestion and then generating biogas and converting that to heat or energy, which is one of the technologies um, my, my colleague uh, spoke about uh, in the previous podcast. Um, scale often does come into it there. And for that technology, for example, you know that only very large wastewater treatment works approximately from 20 megaliters uh, per day capacity and upwards. Um, this technology would be viable. But all the technologies that are have a three to five year payback or a, a less than one to two year payback is typically as independent of the scale or the size of the, of the wastewater treatment works and, and they can be implemented uh, across, the, across the board at all wastewater treatment works in all likelihood um, will be financially feasible. What types of financing models or mechanisms has been successful in supporting similar projects in the past? I think most of your listeners will probably be familiar with the grant system that municipalities predominantly operate on. Um, so they apply for grant funding from the national fiscus to uh, uh, implement infrastructure projects and, and provide services to constituents within municipalities. And so, um, so typically when you look at those low cost interventions uh, with short payback periods, uh, the, the, the best or most advisable um, route for municipalities to implement these projects would be through self-funding it or through uh, grant funding from, from the various grant sources uh, for municipal services. But there's the slightly more uh, complex projects that maybe, maybe have a three to five year payback can also be funded through um, energy services companies, for example, or ESCOs. Uh, through service level agreements uh, with the municipalities where the, uh, the ESCO essentially comes to implement um, and install the technologies without any upfront capital and cost paid by the municipality. And then um, they essentially provide a, a service to the municipality um, over a period of time and the savings that are um, gained from the technologies are used by the municipality to pay that ESCO service cost that they, they associate with that. And then after the, the contract ends, say after three to five years, then the municipality fully owns that technology um, 
and can gain the full benefit of the, the energy efficiency that's gained um, by those technologies uh, on an ongoing basis. And then for the larger projects, uh, you know, loan financing could be a, an option, as well as in, I guess, rare instances, probably one could um, also look at a triple P making sense for uh, implementing really large, complex, and capital intensive projects. Raldu, what due diligence measures should financiers undertake when considering investment in municipal wastewater treatment energy projects? And how can these risks be successfully mitigated? Due diligence ideally should be initiated by the municipality. And so the typical kind of steps that a municipality would go through is developing a pre-feasibility and doing a pre-feasibility study to see which technologies have potential to be implemented and can be financially viable as well. Then um, if it passes that initial uh, pre-feasibility, then going on doing a a full technical feasibility. Um, And from there, if uh, the the implementation is technically feasible, then you would go on and do a a more thorough financial viability and feasibility of uh, implementing that project. And I think the, the onus on potential financiers or investors um, in these types of projects would would add a lot of value in terms of supporting municipalities in um, ground truthing and and, and checking particularly the financial feasibility and viability of these projects and really support them also then in identifying the the appropriate or best funding um, options or instruments uh, for that particular project based on financial profile of the project. I think key for financiers and investors to look at besides the the kind of technical feasibility and the financial feasibility is to ensure that the municipality has the technical skills and an internal capacity to both implement and utilize that technology effectively because most of these technologies are, of course, a lot of these technologies are plug and play, but um, effectively the the gains that um, can be achieved through these technologies still comes down to how they're managed within um, the operating procedures of those wastewater treatment works. So that's, I suppose, a key market to look for is the kind of technical capacity of the municipality to to actually implement and operate these these technologies over in the foreseeable future. What is the current state of municipal readiness when implementing these projects at municipal wastewater treatment works? We developed a, a, a number of years ago is a index to assess the, the readiness of municipalities to implement these types of projects uh, at wastewater treatment works um, in South Africa. And that index essentially takes into account three core metrics. So the one is the, the overall kind of governance um, of the municipality um, that typically looks at the, the Auditor General results and the audit um, outcomes for each municipality. And the second element of that is the, the affordability of the municipality. So that kind of speaks more to the financial management of the, the municipality and to what extent they can afford non-grant funding to implement these projects. And then the third element um, looks at the technical capacity uh, within the water department of each municipality and looking at key metrics like staff turnover, vacancies within uh, the water department uh, within each municipality and particularly on the technical part. So it's not, it's not a, it's not a, very granular assessment, but it's a high-level assessment taking those three core um, pillars into account and then coming up with an overall index of the the readiness of the municipality to implement um, these types of projects. And and so what we found is taking those three metrics into account, um, about 20% of municipalities in total in South Africa have a very high readiness to implement um, the full spectrum of projects. So from the simple short payback um, type of projects to the those projects that have a medium short payback and medium complexity, 
to being able to implement a full refurbishment or a, a very complex project. Another 20% sits at the opposite end of the spectrum where, um, in all honesty, the, the governance, financial um, management within the municipality and the technical capability within the municipality doesn't justify um, or makes them not ready or viable to implement uh, any sort of um, complex project. And, and for these municipalities, the, the opportunity still exists to implement some of the very basic interventions uh, that are still going to give you some gains, but um, that's really uh, the only types of projects that those municipalities can implement. Then um, the balance of so the other 60% of municipalities sits in that sort of middle ground where they may have some technical capacity, but perhaps their, um, their affordability to take on loans for these types of projects isn't there. Or the other way around, where perhaps they can take up loans and, and their team audits, but um, don't necessarily have the technical capacity to implement these projects. And that's where, where procurement models like the ESCO or energy services contract can come in um, to actually be able to implement these projects at these municipalities, um, taking into account their, their slightly limited capacity to, to, do, um, to implement these projects. And, the, the gains that can be gained through through that are still sizable and significant um, for the energy demand at the waste water. So, so in in summary, to just answer your question, so around twenty percent kind of low readiness to implement these types of projects. Um, the other twenty percent very high readiness to to implement uh, these types of projects, and then the middle sixty percent um, have varying degrees of uh, readiness to implement, but are still probably likely to be able to implement um, quite a substantial range of energy efficiency technologies. Are there any specific state incentives or grants or tax credits available to financiers that partner with municipalities in the sector? There are not many um, specific grants or tax credits uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, the only specific grant around energy efficiency for municipalities that I'm aware of is the energy efficiency and demand side management grants, which is available to municipalities. They can apply for it based on the, the projects that they have in mind. That grant is fairly limited. Um, I'm not sure what the latest figures are, but uh, quite recently when I looked at that, the, the total grant available for all municipalities in South Africa was in the region of 200 million. And considering there's 256 municipalities in South Africa, um, you can imagine the actual uh, availability per municipality is quite low. But one thing that one could do or municipality could do is to instead of using that grant um, to actually purchase hardware to implement, that grant can be used to actually do some of the pre-feasibility work and look at the financial modeling around the implementation of these technologies um, so that they can then uh, get loan financing or put out a, a tender for an ESCO to implement these technologies um, with off-balance sheets uh, financing um, would be one way to, to kind of stretch that grant a lot further as uh, municipalities in South Africa. And then secondly, the the typical grant that's used for municipal, municipal infrastructure called the Municipal Infrastructure Grant or the MIG grant, or short, um, most municipalities will be aware of this, that can be applied um, to in this instance, but it's typically used for kind of larger refurbishment um, or, or revamping of, of wastewater treatment works. Um, and then within that project, obviously, you can use the, the most um, up-to-date and newer technologies in that, so that can be applied as well. Raldo, in closing, how can municipalities improve their credit worthiness? It's, it's probably a topic that can, can take up um, several weeks of podcast in and of itself. Um, but I think within the context that we're speaking about today, um, there are some key principles that, are, that can be applied by municipalities more broadly, but also specifically within this opportunity of um, implementing energy efficiency at wastewater treatment works. 
Um, but maybe just to start off with the, the kind of foundation, and it's, there's no real way to circumvent this, but better overall governance um, in a municipality more broadly um, is really the key foundation to um, establishing credit worthiness. So that's from your senior leadership um, to your overall financial management. Um, so in your municipality, uh, ultimately leading to clean audits is really the, the first kind of foundation that, that most uh, financiers and investors will look at before they think about uh, financing a project at a municipality. Um, and then within that context, um, to you know, there's two kind of slightly different components to credit worthiness. It's, it's your financial governance um, and financial management, but there's then also the affordability uh, component that comes into play. And they're the typical levers that, um, that all of us have to increase our, our credit worthiness is to reduce our expenditure and to increase our um, income. Saudi Arabia, so that's the same context that uh, the same levers that municipalities have in terms of improving their credit worthiness uh, is to reduce their expenditure and, and increase their revenue. And within the context of this uh, this opportunity that we're talking about today, uh, energy efficiency at wastewater treatment works. If you think about the the original headline figures that I provided, where up to thirty percent of municipalities' total expenditure can be attributed to the electricity consumption within wastewater treatment works. And if you can implement um, technologies that can uh, provide 50% energy efficiency savings with three-year paybacks, uh, you can make quite a substantial dent in the overall expenditure um, that a municipality has. And so you're starting to work towards that um, increasing the credit worthiness by reducing your, your expenditure. And a lot of these technologies have very long lifespans. So once you implement it, you get your initial payback, uh, you pay off that technology, then over the next 15 to 20 years, uh, that expenditure line on the municipalities will be reduced by, say, 15 to 20 percent, which, you know, which can, can really add up over, uh, over a period of time. And then um, on the the increase in your revenue side, and if you think about it in a water sector context, but I think it's, you know, it applies to electricity and, and all other municipal services as well, is if a municipality can improve its ability to collect the revenue that's due to it, um, then that those are those are essentially the two levers that municipalities have to improve their credit worthiness, um, and then they can be more likely to be eligible for um, getting loan financing for more complex projects, which includes, increases their asset base, increases their ability to deliver services, and therefore increases their ability to uh, collect revenue in the long run, which will increase financial uh, feasibility or financial viability um, and sustainability of that, um, of that municipality, which is really the, the bedrock of credit worthiness. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very complex and, and large challenge that we have in South Africa. But I think if you break it down to these smaller components and think about the actual levers that can be implemented and the actual technologies and the actual uh, financial instruments that can be applied in, in the short run, then it's creates the, the actual mechanisms for municipalities to, to improve their overall credit worthiness um, in the long run. Thank you for this insightful conversation, Roldu. This episode is part of a three-episode series. Make sure to check out the rest of the series on Future Cities Africa.